Hey guys, welcome to Daddy's Money Garage. Today's a bit unique, because obviously I'm not trespassing anywhere. I'm in my own driveway. Uh, that's not really by choice, though, because this thing is running like complete garbage. If you uh, watch the Mallory video we did a couple days ago, you may have noticed that we discovered a couple of broken parts inside the Mallory YL distributor under the hood of this thing. And it's put me in a bit of a pickle, honestly. I meant to change them yesterday, but now I have to do it <laughs> immediately because this car is supposed to be at a festival in Portland, Tennessee right now about 40 miles away and it's 10 a.m. and she's not gonna make it if I don't do this so if you've never changed points before stick stick around cuz uh, I'm gonna show you how and even if you have stick around anyway cuz it might be fun okay so if you've never messed with ignition points let me give you the best explanation that I possibly can of how they work this is a set of ignition points. These will cause a lot of problems if they are not maintained properly. But essentially how they work is it's an on and off switch. And when these points are closed, those two contacts touch, it completes the circuit inside of the ignition system and it builds up a magnetic field inside of the ignition coil. When the points open, that magnetic field collapses and it generates a high voltage current that is sent to the distributor through the rotor button to the spark plug and that's what fires off your your engine these are under constant strain they are opening a countless amount of times every second and a lot of times what will happen is the points will crater because they have there's an arc in between here every time they open so if you use a very high powered ignition coil, these will wear out quicker, but as long as you keep them clean and maintain them, you usually don't have a problem. These are not as scary as a lot of people make them out to be. All right, so you're gonna need a couple of tools and parts to get this job done. Obviously, you're gonna need a new set of ignition points. If you have a Mallory distributor, these are part number 25042X. These are heavy duty ignition points. The only thing that's, that sets them apart from a regular set of points is the uh, spring stiffness is higher on the heavy duty points. You're going to need two sets of these because they don't sell them two to a pack for some reason. Uh, anyway. Also, we're replacing the rotor button because mine was worn out. This is part number 309. It's like 10 bucks. Not a big deal. And I'm not replacing the cap or condenser, but I, I wanted to bring it out just to show you in case you need one. Uh, this is part number 209, if you need a cap for a Mallory YL, and the condenser. Okay, so one thing about condensers, these, if this, if this goes out, your, your ignition will be all over the place not working properly. Um, newer condensers do not have the same standard of quality as the old ones. I highly recommend, if you can, get old condensers. I'm not changing mine out, but like I said, I just wanted to show you the part number. That's 25500. Very good condensers. So the tools you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a Sharpie, a wrench to get off the, <coughs> the hold down for your distributor. You can use either that L shape or a regular one. I prefer the regular one. You're going to need whatever wrench you need to take off the wire to your distributor. A set of feeler gauges, a flathead screwdriver, a dwell meter, and a timing light. And we're going to get into that dwell meter in a minute because nobody really understands those anymore either. Unless you're from the old school. If you're a millennial like me, that thing's just a voodoo. So you may be wondering why you're going to need a sharpie to change out ignition points. Uh, that's because we're going to be popping the distributor completely out. You can change your points while the distributor's in. I just find it easier to pop the distributor out. So take your Sharpie and make a mark at the base of your distributor and on the engine block itself. That way, when you pop it back in, you'll know where to line it up and it should fire right off. All right, let's get the distributor out. Okay, so now we're ready to pop the distributor out. We have to come around to the other side to get to the hold down bolt. Uh, first, start by taking the cap off. And loosen your hold down bolt with whatever style you prefer, right down here. I know you can't see it, but 
if I can get this thing on there. There we go. Just break her loose. And hold down comes out. You know, it also helps to disconnect the wire from the distributor to the coil. Otherwise, you might just take that wire with you, and that would be even worse. I definitely don't want to have to change out a, a, a wire as well. So, break your ignition wire loose off the distributor. Take the little nut off. And don't lose it. I have dropped this so many times. Stay there. Okay. And now, we should be able to just pop our distributor out. If she wants to. Let me give her a little bit. Uh, it's like, it's like taking out King Arthur's sword. There we go. All right. Now let's get the points changed out. Also, when you're pulling your distributor out, make a note of which way the rotor button was facing. This one was facing forward on a Mopar. You can only put it, you know, in two different areas. So it's really easy to figure out. But on a Chevy or a Ford, it's, uh, they've got way more teeth for this thing to fall into. So make sure that you remember which way your rotor button was facing. Okay, so now we have our distributor out. Uh, you can see that there is a rather large divot in this uh, in this distributor rotor. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that out before that wears all the way through. So we'll just go ahead and pop her off. They're like little press-on fits. So pop it off. Throw it away. Don't need that. And now we're ready to get our points out. And the first thing that I do is go ahead and just take this little nut here off because the screw that this nut is attached to runs through the points. I actually just dropped that. Let me pick that up real quick. Okay, yeah, don't don't drop this nut. Don't you don't want to lose that. So now that that nut is off, uh, we'll just push this screw on through. Take it out of the way as best as I can. I know the angle's a little weird, but let's see. Oh, well, let's take this little insulator off here. Take the screw out. All right. And there we go. Take that screw out. Save your little insulators in here. Uh, you don't want to lose these. If these little insulators are not here to take up the, the gap in this hole back here, uh, you'll have an arc inside of the distributor and your, it, your ignition system won't work properly. So now that we're at this point, I don't know if you can see, there's two little screws that hold these points in. One right here, and one right here. And we're just gonna have to take those out. And it's, you know, use the thinnest screwdriver that you can, because they did not put these things in the most accessible points. So, if you're sitting here frustrated watching me work this screwdriver, I promise you, I am just as frustrated because it's too big okay don't lose that screw don't lose it ah found it and take out the other screw right here oh come on they're not that long there we go All right, now we got our screws out. These points here, we'll just pop right out. And it's as simple as that. So this is our bad set of points, and I wanna show you why they're bad. Uh, points have to be set at a static uh, gap. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but see how that wiggles? Uh, that is not that is not how it's supposed to be. It it will move all over side to side. You can actually hear it. Um, 
So the reason that these failed is because this spring here is uh, too weak for higher RPM. You can see that the rivets into the back here that attach to the armature that the contact is on, uh, they have broken loose. So it will allow this to move around when it should not. That's why we're upgrading the heavy duty points. So now we're ready to go ahead and put our nice new points into our distributor. Uh, these are the new sets. They come with a new wire. Uh, sometimes you'll have to bend this little contact here where they clip on uh, to fit around the contour of the distributor. But assembly of the points is just a, just a reversal of taking them out. You just take them and make sure you line it up here on the little post that it mounts to and push it all the way on. You might have, like I said, you're probably going to have to bend these contacts a little bit. You don't want it to make contact with the distributor, but that's okay. We can bend it once it's already in there. So we'll just push it all the way down, make sure that it seats, and the cheese right there. Take your screw, and this is this is a fun part. You just kind of have to, oh, yeah, see? You're going to do this about 9 million times. Uh, and have to drop it in in a way that it can actually screw in. And I don't know if you can see it. Uh, well, we'll just finagle with it. I can usually move it in there. Let's see. Okay. So now that we're, we're at this point, let's just see if we can straighten her out. Get on there. There we go. Uh, get in the hole. There we go. A little bit. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. If anybody knows an easier way to get this screw in, please let me know. I've been doing this for years and I have not found a very easy way to get this in. We don't want to get her completely tight yet, just enough to seat her down. So now that you've got that one set in, just do it to the other side. Now we got our points in, they have seated. Now we just need to put it back together. So you want to take your screw and your little insulator run the screw through both of the points and make sure you put the insulator with the little raised section uh, going outside the distributor because that will fill in the gap so just run her through like so it doesn't matter which set you point you put first on the on the screw all that matters is that they're both there and the wires won't get kinked so we'll put her on like that I'll put the other little insulator back on like that, condenser wire, and the cute little nut that likes to get lost. Screw back on, and just get her to seat a little bit. They don't have to be super tight. And there we go. Points are changed. Now we just got to gap them. So now we have to set the point gap, and to do that, you need a feeler gauge. Um, the manual for the Mallory says to set the points at 20 thousandths each. That's, uh, that's good enough to get it to start. So we'll just take a screwdriver and uh, loosen up this screw a little bit so that the points will move. And you'll want to rotate, and this is for every distributor, you want to rotate this cam to where the lobe is sitting on the rubbing block and bringing the point to the, you know, to the open position. So these are points are completely closed, so obviously there's going to be some adjustment made. And on the Mallory, there's a beveled screw here that will allow you to open and close the gap as you need. So we'll just open her up a little bit, take the feeler gauge, stick it in the gap between the two contacts. It fits, but it's quite loose. Just a hair tighter, just a little bit of resistance. Let's see, let's tighten her up a little bit. Just little tiny finite adjustments make a big difference with this distributor. Okay, yeah, that's a little better. Okay, that's set at 20,000. So uh, we'll just lock her down. And on the Mallory, that beveled screw will prevent the points from shifting. So you don't have to worry about the gap closing or opening when you tighten the screw down as you do on a factory distributor. And just to show that, just tighten it down. Still exactly where it needs to be. And all you do is just set the other one and, uh, and you're good. You can throw her back in the car. Now we have attached our new rotor button 
And I wanted to bring up one more thing you should probably do. Both points are gapped as well. Uh, one more thing about points. Um, they are a wear item, but you can extend the life with proper maintenance. And they need to be lubricated. A lot of people don't know this, especially, you know, <laughs> people my age <laughs> don't know if, you know, you have to lubricate points. So uh, this is standard lubricam. This is specifically for lubricating points. All you do is just put a little dab on the cam here. And that rubbing block has got a little pad. And these come pre-lubed, but it helps to add a little bit just because who knows how long that's actually gonna last. Um, just put a little dab on it and spin it around. And that'll ensure that your rubbing block stays in good shape. Because if that rubbing block wears too quickly, um, your gap will be affected as well. So it helps to just go ahead and give it a little bit more lubrication than what's going to come with the points. Now we're at the point of putting the distributor back into the engine and to make sure that your rotor button is facing, you know, where it was before, because uh, it will likely have moved by this point. Uh, that's also just, uh, I didn't change out my cap, so I didn't dis disconnect my wires. It helps to uh, make sure you remember which one goes where. Take your distributor and put it back in here. And it's not gonna fall completely in, uh, but you can get it pretty close. As long as I can get it back in the seat here. All right. There we go. So make sure that your marks line back up that you left with the Sharpie earlier. And the Mopar distributor has to pop into the oil pump drive and you can feel it you know wobble between its notches and when it gets a little bit closer you can just give it a little bit of a tap and she'll seat right back in like so so like I said line up your marks where they were that should be pretty close pop your cap back on and she should be ready to run so one good thing to remember too is that if you lose your mark and it fades away or something, the mark you left on the bottom of the distributor, um, the number one post here, this wire, is just draw an imaginary straight line to the number one cylinder and that'll usually get you close to the ballpark. So the last thing you want to do is put your hold down back in and but you don't want to tighten it up completely because you're going to want to make adjustments. And we'll just get her seated on there a little bit. Like I said, don't tighten her completely on because you want to be able to rotate the distributor because now we got to set the timing. All right, let's get the timing light. Okay, now that we got our distributor in, we have our timing light hooked up, it's got power, we know it's going to work. We need to start it up and get her warmed up because the ignition timing needs to be set with the engine warm because it's just going to be running the best when it's warmed up. Uh, so we have the marks on the distributor base and the block lined up that we left with a Sharpie. In theory, she should just fire right back up. So let's give her a try. First need the key. So let's see here in the cylinder. <coughs> Okay, yeah, that's perfect. So let her warm up, we'll come back, make sure the timing's on, and then set the dwell. All right, so she's pretty well warmed up. Now we gotta set the ignition timing. And this is why you leave the, uh, the distributor a little loose because you may have to make adjustments. How you're gonna do that is you're gonna take your timing light, you're gonna aim it down at the balancer, whichever side your timing tab is on. And just so you can see it, there's a little tab with a white line on the balancer you want to line it up with the zero mark and that should show you where you're setting on your ignition timing you may have to spin the distributor either direction to get it lined up properly whether you need to advance it or retard the timing that's going to be specific to your engine uh, but you'll be very it'll be very clear which way it needs to go if you're making adjustments and keep on checking it this one's set dead on so now we can just move on to setting the dwell which is a much more time consuming process 
Now, if you're watching this and you have no idea what a dwell meter is, I don't blame you. Uh, it's a it's a rather obsolete tool for a lot of people now. But I have one, and this one was brand new when I got it. Uh, <clears throat> so this is how you check the dwell on your points. And what dwell is, is uh, <clears throat> it's how long the points are closed. And you'll see here, there's readings for eight cylinder, six cylinder, and four cylinder. We're gonna be looking for eight cylinder. And on this distributor, your dwell angle needs to be about 26 degrees on each set of points. So we're looking to get that measurement about right there. I haven't hooked it up to see if it's uh, to see if it's dead on or anything. I doubt that it is, it usually is not. But I'll show you how to hook it up anyway. And we'll see, if, uh, see how well these are gapped. Okay, so setting up your dwell meter. You want to take your leads from your dwell meter and hook up your red positive lead to the negative post on the coil and take your negative lead and where'd it go? Oh, it's right here. Just hook it up to any ground, just anything that works. Uh, yeah, right here. That'll work. Now this is only for dual point distributors, this, this thing I'm about to tell you. Um, you wanna set the points uh, dwell one at a time. Uh, and that involves putting a piece of like card stock or something in between one set of points and running it off of the other set. You're, you're gonna be popping the cap off and making adjustments a lot, but this is the way to get it set properly. So it's really worth doing. It'll run, it'll run without setting the dwell like this, but if you want to get the most out of it, just you, you, you just gotta do this. <laughs> now that the dwell meter is set up and ready to go, let's get a reading on that set of points and see where we need to make an adjustment. So I got one set of points blocked off, and uh, and it still runs. So yeah, you can just run a dual point off of one set. Okay, our dwell angle is at 38 degrees, which means that the points are staying closed too long, which would mean that we need to uh, shorten the gap. Yeah, so we need to make the gap a little bit smaller. So let's make that adjustment and come back and see what we get. Oh, thank God. Okay, 26 degrees of dwell on one set of points. Now all we gotta do is uh, swap the piece of cardstock over to the other set of points and set the other set. So let's go check to see where they're at now. If you had a single point distributor, you would be done by now. But since this is a dual point, I have uh, another set of points to set. And I have moved the cardstock over into the set of points that we just set the dwell on. And now we're gonna check the dwell on the other one. So let's go ahead and fire up and see where she's sitting. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. That's a pretty that's a pretty easy adjustment to make. We just need to take a degree or two off and she's good. And then we'll be able to check our total dwell. So let's make nine million more adjustments and get it right. Uh, okay, we've made the nine millionth adjustment to the second set of points. And let's see if this time it came out right. I hope so, because it's hot. I'm not making it to that festival now. So I might as well just work on my car. Let's just see. Uh, okay, right at 26 degrees. Now remember this number because we're gonna check the dwell when both points are working. We've got the cardstock removed and now we're gonna check the total dwell. And that's the whole point to have a dual point. These points individually are set at 26 degrees of dwell angle. And if this was a single point distributor, that would be where the reading sits. Um, dual points will read a higher dwell angle to give the coil more time to build up a charge at high RPM. And that's the whole point to have one. At high RPM, single points will start to float and you will not get a, cho a, a charge in the coil and it'll start breaking up. But when you have a dual point, you get a little bit more dwell out of points set at a lower dwell angle. Both points being set at 26 degrees of dwell angle give this engine about 33 and a half angles of dwell and, uh, and that'll be good for high RPM.
the last thing you're going to want to do is check your ignition timing one more time because low angle will have an effect on ignition timing a little bit and as we can see i don't know if you can see it it actually had no effect on it at all this time okay so that's good so uh we are officially done all right guys well that pretty much wraps that up uh i hope i gave you some good info let me know if i didn't as i've said before please fact check everything I say because I'm not a mechanic I'm just you know an idiot with an old car so uh, let me know if you do it differently and uh, if you want to see more like and subscribe because we got a lot to do and I'll catch you in the next one